Good morning, guys. Well, it's morning where I am right now. I started thinking, when I said good morning, I was thinking, is it morning wherever you are? Should I say good morning? Should I say good afternoon? I don't even know. But hello, welcome to Rooted Diaspora, and you guys, I am so, so happy that you're here. You chose to stop by and say hello to me and really get into this topic. So you guys, there is something that I have been thinking about because I've been seeing a lot of people on YouTube, in different social media platforms, um, and even personally, friends, family members, um, who have complained about a lot of the issues facing diasporans going back to Ghana, trying to do business or relocating to Ghana. You know, there are some positive, you know, um, comments, uh, some positive experience, but there certainly are, and I'm sure you've seen a lot of complaints out there, a lot of misfortunes that have happened to people who just simply thought of just going to Ghana and just making a new type of life. So I just wanted to open up the platform to discuss this with um, a lot of you guys seeing what your experiences have been um, and you know if you'd like to share that what what are some of the advices that you have for people who are looking to relocate to Ghana um, and are looking to do business in Ghana now what I know is that the year of return was created so that African Americans especially particularly could learn more about their roots they could learn more about Ghana uh, learn more about their history and find a connection and just learn more about the country and obviously from that if having an interest in investing in the country they could go ahead and do so I am not aware that there were anything um, any specific things in place to facilitate uh, business transactions or accommodations or anything like that for people who um, are trying to do that from abroad so sometimes when I hear some things out there where they're like, well, Ghana was not ready for us. Ghana doesn't have the system for us. There's a lot of scamming. Sometimes I wonder if um, it's just maybe expectations were too high when those things were not on paper that were going to be offered. All that was really offered was an open gate for you to um, assess the country, see if you like it, and really, if you do like it, find ways for you to do business at your own risk, right? Um, though, even that said, I do believe that the country of Ghana and the government could do way more to help the country, just like so many countries in Africa. Though I do believe that there are some things that we may not know that may be having an effect into the reasons why the country is not moving as fast as we would want to see it move. And obviously there are some cultural, traditional things that I think are also holding Ghana back and other African countries back. But I do also think that there are some things beyond our knowledge that we may not be aware of. And I don't want to speculate in my channel that may be a cont contributory factors as to why we don't see the country moving the way that we want to see it and we, and we find barriers and so on and so forth. But one thing I want to caution in my channel is that um, I am a Christian and so I try my best to um, learn more about the Bible and try to implement what I learn in the Bible in my life. And there are scriptures in the Bible where, um, if I find it, I'll put it down below or I'll put it in the screen. Um, it says that whenever you have someone appointed in government, and that, it's interesting because I just learned that last week at my church group, um, whenever someone is appointed in power, when whether you agree with their lifestyles, their choices, their leadership or not, your job is to really just respect and to do your best. Because at the end of the day, when it comes down to you and your household, you choose what to do, right? You can't blame everything on the government body right so at the end of the day your job is to follow the rules follow follow the rules follow the regulations if there are loopholes that make some people gain success faster and all of that you don't participate in that because that's how the country keeps going down you know you do the best you can and do be the best citizen that you can be within your capacity and respect those who are in power whether they are npp whether they are ndc whether they are liberals it is none of your job to disrespect to um what, what do you call it to call name call it because when you really think about it, these people who have made it into such positions, they must be really smart because it is not easy for anyone to prove themselves or to even go through the channels, the right channels to be able to get to a certain position. They have to have some type of intelligence and wisdom that help them get to where they are. 
I'm sure some people just get grandfathered in and so on and so forth. But even then, the grandfathering in, it's not an easy process in itself either. So there is some level of respect that we still owe anybody in power, even as written in the Bible, to first of all, not sin against our God. And second of all, to respect ourselves, right? Because in life, we have to respect those above us, those below us, and those like us. Respect is very, very important to get us anywhere in life. We really, really should think about that. But going back to the issues that I've noticed are in Ghana, I took notes because I don't want to forget anything um, that I personally think are important to discuss. So this is to help uh, diasporans like I am a first generation Ghanaian immigrant uh, born here. Uh, I was born in Italy, lived in Italy for the earlier stages of my life until about early teenage years, moved to London and came to the United States. That's my story. And I've been in the United States for most of my latter part of my teenage years and adulthood. Um, so there are some things here that I talk about based off of personal experience. Some things are based off of other people's experience and things that they've said and things that I've observed. And also some of them are just experiences from family members like my parents, you know, family members like my uncles and aunties, what they've experienced as um, Ghanaians living abroad with challenges that they've encountered um, while trying to do business transactions in Ghana or try to relocate in Ghana. So the first thing that I think within my power, within my knowledge, my little brain, want to try to um, caution a lot of people who um, are being um, encouraged to relocate to Ghana because of the year of return or beyond the return. I want to make sense, first of all. The first thing you need to understand that anywhere that you would go, you need to make research. And research is not just watching YouTube videos. I am just anyone who decided to put a video on YouTube and talk to you about what I believe is important. Anyone else can do the same. Do you understand? A whole clan can come together and make a masterpiece of a, 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 an argument or, or, or a, a, a something they want to um how do you call it that they want to um persuade people to believe and if you don't be careful you might take it because maybe you already kind of are tired of where you are you want to change you want a difference and it's so easy for you to just grasp whatever let me fix this camera a little bit i feel like it's gonna slant it yeah. There we go. It's kind of easy for you in that vulnerable position to kind of just grab that information and take it, right? Um, but don't just rely. Most of the information on YouTube is real. If you follow people like Tatiana Haina, if you follow people like Jasmine Ama, if you follow people like, um, who can I think, Web Nation Africa especially, um, Deja Vu, Stella Shale. Most of those channels tell you the truth of Ghana, especially Web Nation Africa has um, stories of people who um, have gone to Ghana, tried to go to Ghana, travel to Ghana, and will bring you their experiences because they're being interviewed and those stories are real. I would really actually recommend you watch that channel multiple times so that you can really hear people's experiences. But going back to what I was saying, a lot of people um, just can come up on YouTube and say whatever they want to say, right? So you need to not just focus on what you find on YouTube, but do your own research. Google up. Immerse yourself within the Ghanaian community of where you live. If you're in the States, for instance, and you live in New York, you know that New York has a big Ghanaian population, in the Bronx especially. Go and mingle with Ghanaians there Do you and find out, do you even like being around Ghanaians? Do you like their culture? Do you like their food? Make friends with them. 
Ask them questions about what their experience has been like going to Ghana. Ask them questions about what are the challenges that you would face if you who may not have nothing to do with Ghana, or maybe you're kind of like me where, <laughs> you know, you weren't born and raised in Ghana, but your parents are from Ghana. So you don't really know 100% everything. You know some things, but not everything. So you have to ask a lot of questions. And if anything, go with these people when they go so that they can hold you under their arm and kind of teach you the ways right learn study about the culture because it is so different it's like if you were going to asia it's so different right if you were going anywhere it, it's different so you need to understand what are the challenges that people face there what are the pros and what are the cons everything before you make that move um and really don't just rely on youtube don't rely on the beautiful restaurants and beaches and all that that you see that's everywhere even in the poorest of the poorest countries in the world they have beautiful beaches they may have a couple restaurants here and there so what makes you think that if you're going to ghana if you're going to a developing country in a continent where there's a lot of third world countries what makes you think that ghana is going to be close to what you're used to in the western world no 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 you need to be mentally ready and prepared and realistic on what you are trying to expect where you're going right and so and even more what are you what are your realistic expectation of the structure that even was created for you going to ghana to visit uh, during the year of return stage and beyond the return and all that you got to think about all those things my advice is visit ghana as much times as you can as many times as you can before you make any decision to invest any dime in the country first of all and before you even make any decision before you move to the country another thing i recommend that if you try to do business in ghana you live in ghana you give yourself five years live in the country because you are dealing with a country that money you the amount you make in the states in the uk is the amount that some of those politicians don't even make in a month if you take yourself and go to ghana to local people and want to do business with them unless you pump them with a lot of money they're going to try to dump you it's human nature it sucks but it is what do you expect my friend you're going to a country that has that where teachers get paid a maximum and i researched this i think a maximum a maximum if you're a head teacher of 180 dollars a day where does that go in the states where does that, that where where does that go in the states it ain't going nowhere it's not even somebody's half a day pay this is someone's one month salary so you take yourself from the states and think you're going to succeed in ghana when they know that you have a lot of money and you can make it way faster than they could in the country do you know the amount of jealousy that jealousy may not even it's a genuine jealousy contradicting words right genuine jealousy but it's what it is because i'm here in ghana struggling with my little people making 30 dollars a month 40 dollars a month and you are coming with this money but you need my help to make things go through and sana let me bring my tree out before i let you win i need to get something from it that's how they look at it so when you know that you now understand the why for this coming there are a lot of issues in ghana that are government based there are things that the government could do like infrastructure creating some type of structure in uh, regulating people's um, uh, or understanding and registering what the people's jobs like how we get taxes taken out of our paychecks so that it can help the country the infrastructure and all of that I wish they had a system like that in Ghana where maybe they couldn't take out they wouldn't take out so much money from people because already they don't make that much but a little bit something just to help fix the country a little bit but I don't know if that's gonna happen eventually 
maybe it will with the initiation with the Ghana card. But, um, you know, there are issues that I know um, in Ghana could be fixed in a government uh, level. But like I said in the beginning, let's be respectful. There are things that we don't know because we are not in there that may be going on that may be impeding these things. We don't know. So we need to sit down and not speculate too much. Yes, we are all human. We can think about so many things, corruption, da, 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 da. Yes, but there could be other things that we don't know because it took these people quite some intelligence and wisdom to get to these places to of positions of power. They certainly know a lot, right? More than a lot of people. So we have to be respectful. We have to be cautious. We have to, we have to be, we have to be um, mindful of the language that we use to our leaders. Because the power of the tongue is very strong. We need to use positive words when we are talking about our leaders. That's my take on that. Uh, but yes, if you are someone from the diaspora, whether you're African American, whether you're from the Caribbean, any of that. Um, really think about learning about the culture very well first, where you are, before you decide to travel to Ghana, to move to Ghana, and do any business in Ghana. Because like I said, you're coming with a big lump sum of money. These people in Ghana are struggling to make it on a day-to-day. -day. You know, that why, why, is there, why are there so many street hawkers? Because there aren't that many jobs available for people to actually make good incomes. And even those who make good incomes, the money, they, they, they can't take it out to really do much with it outside of Ghana. So when you're going in, humble down. Go with realistic expectation. Know where you are going. And humble yourself. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. Don't get angry if you get to the airport and people are asking you for money left and right. You know you're going to a developing country. For Christ's sake, just be given. You see what I mean? You have, it's what, even $5, give it to them. They'll be okay with it. Some of them may not say thank you. Some of them will. Just be nice. Giving is what? Just give, right? Now, obviously, when you're being scammed and people are not being truthful when they, all of that, there's ways to prevent that. One way is the first way I've told you is to do your research. Don't get into business with just anyone or trust that someone is going to do a transaction for you. And blah, 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 blah. I would say, well, I haven't done a specific business in Ghana myself, so I'm not the one in place to really advise you 100% on how to do business in Ghana. But these are just basic things that from observation of many people from experience from my parents and family from experience from other people and watching people's experiences i can tell you that you really really need to take your time before you invest anything in ghana and do it the right way with the right people and be there be prepared to deal with all of the environmental factors of ghana being electricity not being available all the time being that um, water, even if you live in a very nice apartment, a very nice house, might go out, even if you're paying for the bill, might go out unexpectedly. Be prepared to deal with a lot of heat because if your electricity goes off every two, three days for six hours, well, you're gonna be hot for a while. So you have to prepare. Maybe you have to buy a generator, right? Be prepared ahead of time in this in to be able to live in these conditions in the most comfortable way that you can. That's number one. Number two, um, I want to talk about the cultural differences again about Ghanaians. So Ghanaians are generally very nice people. They like to help. Um, Ghanaians are mo most Ghanaians are religious Christians. There's Muslims as well. Um, Ghanaians can be very touchy, you know, especially to children. Um, they can like to offer things. They don't think so much because Ghanaians will say I dream fee. Bad mentality is not so much in the Ghanaian community. Like pedophilia and all of that is in. The states and 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 other western country so they are very open to embracing kids or touching them in, in the face and all that we know that we don't want germs so don't touch 
me on the face or my kids or whatever don't be too close but just know that even if you are to go to italy for instance in italy they like to when they meet you first on the cheeks they don't think of it as this is gonna be like spreading so many germs and all of that. No, it's just a cultural norm. Some people pat you on the on the right here, or they hug you like this. You know, they you know in Ghana they don't do that. They don't kiss you too, too, too. but they might touch you like right here, like the kids especially. They might pick them up especially even if they don't know them, um, and you might feel some type of way. Just know that even if. If this happens again, it's a norm. Maybe you can find ways to prevent it, you know, where maybe you tell your kids to go somewhere when you're next to someone who seems that like they will do that. I, I'm not quite sure how you can prevent that, but just be aware of the cultural norms of when you go to Ghana, because if you're not aware, you might find some things offensive. Another thing is that in Ghana, um, when you do go, um, you need to learn the foods you need to learn that and you need to learn where to buy things that you're used to and you need to know that if you want to buy things that you're used to from the western world they're gonna be super expensive because it's important just like Ghana food is expensive in the States and UK is gonna be the same over there maybe triple the price quadruple the price over there so over time as you're there I wouldn't say the first month, the second month that you're there maybe around the third fourth month your body's starting to get used to Ghana you can kind of transition towards more of a Ghanaian diet um, that obviously is healthy so that you can save money right but the main thing that I want to talk about is um, I want you guys to understand human like being humble you know a lot of us when I don't know where this was coming from um, a lot of us when we go to Ghana and we and I even, I thought of it myself too one time last, when we went to, when uh, we went last time in 2018. I'm like, maybe we are overdressing. Maybe we are, you know, we think we are looking normal or whatever. But usually when you're on vacation, you kind of dress a little bit better because you go shopping and all that. But you don't want to be so obvious, right? Because if you're just going to the store and you're wearing the most beautiful dress and all of that, even... The, the richest people don't do that in Ghana, right? Because they live in the country. So they kind of just dress however. So I would say just think about things like that. Maybe just humble yourself a little bit. Um, and then to those who are not trying to scam, scam you, be kind and be generous because um, it's not forced, obviously. It's up to you whether you want to be kind and generous to them or not. But for me, I've learned that because initially I was kind of like, why is it that everybody look like they want something from me? Well, ding, ding. If somebody can get paid only a hundred something dollars a month, that tells you why. You know, they know we make way more. They're not stupid. They know. So they're already looking at you as man you coming over here and getting everything for cheap anyway i'm gonna jack up the price don't get angry if you go to a vendor and you know that they jacked up the price just try to negotiate with them a little bit because they probably did make it three four times higher and you negotiated maybe halfway to what they they went higher on but it's still cheap for you isn't it so just change your mindset a little bit you're going to a different country you need to be the one to accustom to the rules and regulations there not the other way around you are not going to the states you are not going to the uk you are not going to italy you are going to ghana these countries in the western world are where they're at right now because they had the chance to get to where they are right now it is going to take african countries a long time before they and i don't want to compare but before they get to a level where all of us feel some sense of comfort because we have been in a situation of colonial colonization oppression and all of that even when you look at things right now you can really tell that things are really better than what they were many years ago it's just that obviously it's not exactly as how we wish it was but be open-minded because at a point in time um somebody had to struggle to get things to where they are 
at this point in their country. And that's where I see a lot of African countries be right now. So we need to be resilient and think of if we are trying to like start a business or implement something, let's not be too discouraged right away and complain about all of what is not available in Ghana to make things happen. Rather, let's look at ways to learn more, um, gain more knowledge, and then use this knowledge to help us do what succeed, to help us strategize a plan that looks like my work. How many times people even try to start businesses in the Western world and they don't work? So let alone in a, a, a developing country, in a second world country, it's going to be tough, especially when you're entering a completely new culture. Just because you might look the same, it's like Asians. They look very similar, but Chinese are Chinese, Japanese are Japanese, Indians and Indians is the same. African-Americans come from a lot of African countries, but they have different bloods in them from different areas. So it's going to be, we all look the same, but we have our own little cultures because of the environments that we were brought up in. So another thing is, I think that there needs to be a bridging effort of Ghanaians learning about those who are coming in work ways so educational opportunities and also educational opportunities for those in the diaspora to learn about Ghanaians and this is a good place to open up the platform for that because I think that that is what is the loophole there are many organizations that are not many let me take that back there are some organizations that are doing things like that especially during the holiday times like I know Guba diaspora network i think that's what it's called with um miss mrs or lady uh denta does a lot of these things um i know web nation africa tries to really do a lot with educating through their channel and then beyond the return you know when you go to their site they have a lot of ways to help support diasporans so keep getting educated keep learning you can't just jump into an idea and want it to succeed you can't feel like because you hear all the about the and safety in the US and you just want to move to Ghana like Ghana is gonna save you there's so many issues in Ghana just like there are in other countries moreover it's a second world developing country what do you expect now if you're going to just get peace of mind you're retired you don't have any intention of starting any serious business it's just you want to retire you want to relax you want to build your house you can do that in two three months get prepared and because you you're not looking for anything you just want peace of mind the only thing though that leads me to the next topic about what we're talking today is ensuring that if you are going to ghana for um retirement or even not just for retirement if you're thinking about moving to ghana or you're going there because you want to do business and you want to stay there for a period of time make sure that you know where you're going to go if you get sick. Because let me tell you, once again, everybody knows that you come from a privileged Western country. So everybody knows that you have way more money than even the doctors are treating you. Everybody knows that. So if you don't be careful and God forbid something happens to you, everybody's going to try to run you around whatever little clinic in their community so that they can get a little bit of your money until you get really, really sick. And now you might not even be able to do what, get on the plane and go get seen in the States or in the UK. Let me be very clear. Make sure that you know where you're going to get medical care when you get to Ghana. It might be a little bit difficult and challenging to find that before you go, but that is why I say before you make the chat, change, the, make the decision to move to Ghana, travel there at least five times. And within these five times, you're not staying there for two weeks. You're staying there for a month. You're staying there for two months. You're staying there for, you know, maybe you can start with two weeks, but then increase it, increase it, increases. And on your stays there, start to research what medical centers will I be able to go to in case I'm sick? Who's gonna be my primary care provider? From which uh, clinic, from which hospital? In case I cannot get to the hospital, where is the, um, what ambulance service can I call? Is the ambulance an effective ambulance or are you gonna call two, three times and nobody answering? Or they're gonna tell you, oh, we are coming, but then there's 20,000 potholes that are not gonna be to your place until who knows when. So think about that and think about where do you wanna live? Um, 
especially if you're going to you know you have some medical conditions you know you might want to build your house maybe next to a hospital maybe a hospital that's at the most 10 15 minutes away because let me tell you especially during holidays times something that takes 10 15 minutes to get to will turn into an hour and you know the roads in ghana you know the roads in ghana that's a whole other thing so these are the things you need to think about to make your stay there smoother don't be a romanticizing fantasizing building a house in the middle of the the forest somewhere because you want to breathe nice air and be in the middle of trees when you get sick <laughs> by the time you get to the hospital eh? but the time you, you, <laughs> I don't want to say do you understand be realistic be really realistic think about what where am I gonna get my medical care research the medical center make sure it suits your medical needs maybe confirm Confer with your providers in the States or in the UK to understand if they know anything of that center that you've chosen. Um, and ensure that you know the pharmacy where you're gonna be getting your medications. Do they have your medications in stock or do they have a version of the medication that you take that is very close to what you're already taking? And then compare about that specific medication that it's in the place where you're going with your provider in the UK and in the States to see, is that okay in case I can't, my medication runs out or just some an emergency. Make sure you do all of this behind the scene homework, especially if you're trying to move to Ghana with children. You know, children are very delicate when they go to Ghana. Their immune system is used to the environment that they were at. And Ghana, unfortunately, because of sanitary issues, is not very sanitary. And even if you go to East Legon, Cantonment and all that, you can see it's not really sanitary. So be very, very vigilant. Know where you, if you go in there with children, which pediat pediatric hospital you can send them to, who's gonna be their pediatrician. Are there specialists that are well-known that do very good work? How, what is their payment system? Will you be able to afford to pay out of pocket? Because let me tell you, I told you again already, they know when you don't come from here, especially when you don't speak the tree language. Oh, and if you speak it and you have a little accent to it, it's better if you speak it even if you have an accent because they know that you have something to do with Ghana, so they can't dupe you very much. But let me tell you that even those who are from Ghana that have gone abroad and returned, they still get duped so many times. I was recently watching this show with uh, so Sonny, I think, from... I forgot his YouTube channel name. This is his YouTube channel name. Something about food reviews. He did some collaboration, I think, with Tatiana Aina and with... Uh, I think her name is Chi Chi. She, she owns a restaurant in Ghana. And he went to some of these local shops... And when they would tell him the price of some of the things that he was buying, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so if this thing is this amount, how, how would the people who live over there, be, how can they afford this? I knew that he was also being cheap. But he didn't mind because it's like, well, whatever, it's still cheap for me. You get what I'm saying? Laugh at it, put it behind you. It's still cheap for you. It's still cheap for you. You know, learn how to live in harmony with people. Learn about people. Learn about with their cultures. That's that's my two cents. Let me see if I have anything else. Oh, yes. Housing. Let's talk about that a little bit. Um, when you go to Ghana, you want to look at housing. You want to explore um, the best options for you. Like I said already, I touched on it already. Look at what you want to have around you when you're looking for housing. Don't just pick because something is cheaper or, is, or looks so beautiful, whatever. Think about what your the amenities that you want around you. Think about that for one. And then for two, look at the prices and, and, and be very vigilant because you could be overpriced. Uh, they could overprice the, the properties and you don't want to be in that situation. Um, ask about um, like um, um, utilities. Ask about electricity. What's their source? Do they have a generator in case, if you're renting, in case um, the light goes out? Do they have backup water tanks in case the water stops running? What's the process uh, in place in case your water stops running? 
you know do they have a laundry facility underneath the house or above the house um does everybody have a place to hang their clothes or do they have a, a dryer um ask these questions the questions the something sometimes you think is normal because you're coming from the western world when you rent an apartment a lot of things are just there already but you're going to a developing country electricity is a luxury okay because people rely on the sun solar you know to do a lot of things so if you're going into an apartment you can't always rely on that you need to rely on light electricity so what you're going to do you need you need to understand what happens in case electricity goes out if you're someone who's on oxygen for instance what is the process then you know or sometimes you may need it what is the process then right if you want to own um something which i don't i i think you should really take your time to travel there many times before you want to own something there um uh, think about buying a generator you know think about your water supply so on and so forth so these are the things that i recommend to you um if you are someone in the diaspora and you want to be rooted <laughs> uh, and you want to be prepared and you want to minimize your chances of being disappointed these are the things that i want to tell you i am realistic i was born and raised abroad so um i feel a lot of what you guys are feeling in both ways in a sense that i was born and raised by a Ghanaian family but i was born and raised in the western world so you can imagine how I'm being looked at when I go to Ghana and also because my tree is so bad even the way I say tree is so bad you know like it, it's just so bad so I was speaking but they laugh at me or they know exactly that uh you know yeah I wasn't born and raised there so there you go when something's supposed to be 10 CDs it is now 50 CDs do you understand me so that's it i'm all done with today's video i hope that you found it helpful i could go on and on and on about this topic because it breaks my heart you know when i see that as a black community we 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 are so easily we don't it seems like we don't work hard to to achieve what we want. And if we see barriers, we don't try to figure out what to do to get rid of those barriers or fight those barriers. We just seem to complain about it, rant about it, talk so bad about it, and just move on with something else. We don't do that. We're supposed to. And I understand, you know, we all can make that mistake, but we need to build tough skin. A lot of other countries have faced issues. What do you think? The people in the Western world, it, it was rocks in, in Europe and the US. It was rocks, but they had to struggle to get it to where it is now. That is why colonization came. Africans, when you think about it, they had a lot. Palm trees, fruits everywhere, warm weather. Not too much struggle was required by the Africans at that time. So I think it made us a little bit relaxed. This is this is my own thought, right? I, I, I don't have anything to back what I'm saying up, but this is my own thought. I think Africans relaxed a little bit because the, everything was just naturally present. But the ones in the Western world had to struggle and that's what built their strength to keep working, 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 working to get their country where it is today. So what do we also have to do when it comes to building our country? We have to be strong, build tough skin, and even through the challenges, keep moving forward. Because I don't, why are these other people who are coming to the continent succeeding? They are not even from Ghana, nothing from Ghana. I don't want to mention any, they are succeeding though. Why? So if you are a Caribbean, if you are someone from the U US, even Ghanaians in the diaspora, learn what these other people are doing get close to them i'm sure some of them are friendly and you sh you also implement and build tough skin let's stop talking ill about our country let's stop expecting saviors always put everything on the government do you know that there's corruption even in us there's corruption even in you there's so much corruption but the people the people have made it in such a way that the government has to behave. The, the government has to behave and put things in place for people. It is the people. The government is made of people like you, like me. 
We need to speak well about our country. We need to speak well about our leader. If you have nothing good to say, don't say nothing. We need to speak well about ourselves. We need to think positive thoughts. We always need to think of solutions in case of issues rather than uh, Kroma say, oh, the country is this, oh, they, they, they're nasty, oh, they, 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 they. No, don't do that to yourselves. The power of the tongue is so, so, so important. This is a guy here. That's one thing my dad always said to me, and it's true. There are so many things that I used to say when I was little that I didn't even think about. I would just say them, say them, say them. Today, I'm experiencing them. I'm experiencing them. Thank God they were positive. <laughs> because let me tell you, this tank, if you start saying things that are not what you want, if you don't be careful, that's what you see. So let's start talking good about our country, Ghana. Let's start talking good about Africa. Even if you see all the channels, think of how to fix them. Think of how to fix them. All right, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done with my mentee. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time. Ciao, ciao.